Your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God It's running after me 
on, Susan. Sing it right to him. He's listening. He's listening. Sing it right to him. Like you know he's listening. Come on and sing it right to him. Like you know.
33 years of his life, never one time did he ever step out of the will of the Father. Never one time doing one thing that didn't represent the heart well of the Father. See the Lamb, he did that so that he could take our place on a cross. All the guilt and shame that should have come upon us. That beautiful Lamb was marred and beaten beyond recognition that we could walk in power and authority, the same authority that he walked in. He could have come and been the only one, the representation, but his desire was to fulfill a promise that there would be many sons that would walk in the same manner that he did. And he did that for us. This man that we're singing about this morning, this beautiful Jesus, it's not a story. It's not some made up fable told long ago. There was a man 2,000 years ago that walked the earth and he was tied to a post and he was whipped beyond recognition. The word says beyond even knowing whether it was a man or what it was, he was so beaten. And I was marveling this week as I was talking to the guys. I said, Jesus, he lived without sin. And we know that the wages of sin is death. So those men could have started beating him 2,000 years ago and they could still be whipping his body today and he would still be alive if he didn't take our sin upon him. That was the only time that death could have place in him. But how many are thankful that three days later he rose again and that same resurrection power, it is the gospel. That same resurrection power is in you, that wonderful, glorious power. He didn't hold it for himself. He gave it every ounce of it. He poured out his blood. Out of his side came pouring water, a liquid love that would wash over us and make us as white as the snow. Every crimson stain, every crimson stain, everything that you could ever have done and will ever do is covered by the power of his blood. Come on church, it's wonderful. Somebody take joy this morning in the message of the gospel. How
thank you for your kindness and your mercy. Lord, I thank you that you've made a way that we can come and see your face. So beautiful to look into his eyes and to see the reflection of him. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing in the world that could ever satisfy us like him. When I quiet my mind and quiet my thoughts and I just breathe him in and I feel him and I look into his eyes, there's nothing that can satisfy me like that. There's something the Lord's been speaking over and over to me. We had a week of, I don't know, just obstacles and physical stuff and just stuff that you're like, you know, I always tell the kids, I'm like, you know how like, you feel like there's like these annoyances, you know, like if you ever seen a horse out there and he's like moving around and like all these gnats are around him, you think that poor horse has got to like deal with all those gnats. And, but you know, the horse doesn't stop focus and he keeps on going. And I've always seen certain seasons where we have this momentum and then this little stuff just kind of takes you and it, it, you know, physical stuff, it, it can wear you down because it's annoying. Like for me, I don't ever feel bad when I, something happens or I don't, feel well, I'm annoyed. Like, I'm like, I, this is just frustrating. And I feel like we have to stay focused in this next season. I feel like our family sometimes represents things that this family goes through. And they weren't a lot of big things, but they were a lot of little things that could easily distract from the momentum and the focus that we are having and that we are meant to have. And I felt this like train moving in a new way in January and this shift and this turn and this new and this excitement and these little things start creeping in. And if we're not careful, it's easy to set our focus and our gaze on that because it is in our face. Like I'm not pretending it's not there, but what I fix my eyes on is my choice, right? And so it's so important. There's this little series of books I used to read to my kids and and, and then I did it with King's kids and, and it was about a little boy in this community, in this village and they were all, you know, enjoying life and going about and all of a sudden, like they started to get distracted and, and, the, and the parents were like, what are we gonna do about this? And and they didn't want to go to church as much anymore. And, and life was just happening. And, and then, and then the king came. And, and one thing that was asked of all the children is, before you enter in, I'm going to ask you a question. And the question is, do you really want to know him? And they're like, yes, we've always wanted to go to the king. We've always wanted to go to the castle. And they would say, but do you really want to know him? And they're like, yeah, we do. And it was asked about three or four times and even before they entered. And it would always say, do you really want to know him? And in that, the children realized that they had to set aside some things that seemed fun, carnivals and, and different things that, that were not necessarily bad, but it took them away from being with the king. And it only took a moment of sliding down the halls with Jesus and sitting at his table. And it all started because a little boy noticed that one Sunday Jesus was over there very sad looking at empty tables. And the little boy had mercy. And he's like, mom, what's going on? He's like, I think Jesus is noticing that you don't wanna be with him anymore. And they're like, but we come every Sunday and we go to do this. They're like, yeah, but do you wanna be with him? And so I hear him whispering that to me, do you want to be with me? Like, what does that mean to us? Does it mean like all those emails and all the jobs and chores and workload that you have to take home some nights? Those are all things that are real. But being with him takes a choice that you have to ask yourself every day. Do you really want to know him? Do you really want to sacrifice and it's not, doesn't take a lot, right? It feels like it does. But as soon as you look into his eyes, you see the wonder and the excitement and the joy that he has. And all you want to do is be with him. And then all those other things really don't matter. I don't know if any of you have ever had a family member get really sick or your life really take a pause or tragedy struck. And I remember when my cousin he's had three heart transplants. He's a miracle, but I remember when he would get the call for, you have a new heart. 
that is available and you have like six hours to get there. And I remember our lives, no matter what it was, was on hold. I mean, their life, especially everything. And one time it happened in December. And we all think we have this long list of things that have to be done. People that we have to call, jobs that have to be done. But when life gets put on hold, what matters matters, right? And it does, and it's gonna get worked out. When something happens, it's like, God, how did we even survive? Like our life was on hold for three months during this season. And you look back and you go, wow, those things really don't matter. When you almost lose someone, when life really matters. And the question the Lord's been asking me, it has that kind of fear of the Lord attached, not like a children's book. Like, do you really? Do you really want to know me? Do you really want to say yes again and again? Do you really want to do the hard that's not so hard when you say yes with your heart? Because the hard isn't so hard when you breathe Him in and feel His presence. Everything else just fades away. It's like when you look in the rearview mirror and it's like so small and you look and you're looking at where you're going and for me, when I'm driving, if I see like a beautiful sunset or a beautiful sun, it's like, it captivates me. And it's like, oh gosh, I almost forgot where I was. Like I'm driving, but I I, I feel the bigness of the Lord in, in, in nature and around me. And I feel like we're supposed to, to see that. What's in front of us, Him, who we are, what we're called to. It's so grand and it's so beautiful that I feel this morning that we're just supposed to let it fall away. Like, couldn't you feel that in worship today? Like, as Suzanne and Jeff sang so beautifully, it was like, for me, it was an invitation. It was kind of this unexpected invitation to to just be with Him. I could feel the invitation. And as I took breaths, it was like everything of the week that was annoying, that I felt I had to stand up for, and I did, and I didn't do it fighting, I just stood. This morning, I just breathed him in, and I heard him say, like, thanks for being with me. And he showed me different pictures of my week, and sometimes your yes is like getting up in the morning. Sometimes your yes is not giving up. I tell people who are having a hard time, like, it's okay if you can't take a step forward. Just stand. You don't have to always be running. Just be. And in that, you'll get the strength for the next step. So whether your season is running and you have all this excitement, don't be surprised if all of a sudden there's a halt or a stop or a trip, right? Just, just stand and then take a breath and figure out what the next step is. And sometimes it's so simple. Sometimes it's a phone call. Sometimes it's, it's, it's making a, a one choice that is saying yes to something that you wouldn't have said yes to if you didn't stand that day, right? So let's keep standing. And God, I just thank you for the opportunity to come together with all these beautiful, beautiful people that have surrendered their lives to you and said, yes, God, I just pray that the clarity of the Holy Spirit be so relevant and so real in our lives that we would know what to do every moment of every day. And if it's to stand, to take a breath, we would stand and take a breath. And if it's to run fast, we'll run fast. But in all that we do, we'll be led by you. And those little annoyances and distractions will not take us away from being with you our yes to knowing you more and more and more and deeper will allow us to know us more and our vision, it will become so clear. So I thank you for a clear vision this week. I thank you for the yeses and I thank you for the standing. And I thank you, Lord, that if there's someone next to us that's just too weary, that we would just reach our hand up and we would just pull them up. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and love. We are so thankful, so thankful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, man, go give some good hugs this morning. Say hi. If there's a new face, introduce yourself. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for joining us here in worship today. We are honored and blessed that you've chosen to be a part of our worship family here at Kingsway Church. If this video blessed or encouraged you, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be kept up to date with all of our new content. You can also find us on iTunes Podcasts under Kingsway Worship, where we're posting all of our worship moments. 
Also, be sure to like and share this video with your friends and with your family so you can be a part of releasing the sound God is wanting to release in and through his people. Thank you so much.